everybody, I'm Jammer, and guess what? Yes, it's time to talk about Smash again. In the past week or so, plenty and plenty of people have been talking about Final Roster, Final Prediction, Leak, blah, 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 blah. It's been an overwhelming mess because everyone's batting down the hatches because Sakura just announced saying, calm down, we've done too many character reveals, you probably won't see us for a while. People are just going insane, speculating, taking advantage of people, scamming them for views, basically. And everyone's talking about the final roster. But you know what we're gonna do instead? We're gonna talk about the starting roster. Yeah, pretty different. <laughs> From a design standpoint, starting rosters are very integral to the experience for new players. It is the introduction of the game and all players returning and new only have the options that the developers let them play with. So it isn't at random which characters are unlocked and which ones are starting with the game. And it's been like that since the beginning of the series. In Smash 64, the four original unlockable characters were Luigi, Jigglypuff, Captain Falcon, and Ness? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, I was right. So basically just think of it like this. Why were those four characters chose to be unlockables instead of other ones? Why wasn't, you know, Samus unlockable and, or Pikachu instead of whoever we have here? Smash 64 starting off the series anyways had to launch with the main cast of Nintendo characters. The main figureheads. You got your Marios, your Zeldas, your Samosas. You got your Dan Quixotes. You got your Fox McCloud. Wow, I said his name right. If you take a look one by one at the character unlocks, it actually makes sense why a lot of them were unlockable. Both Ness and Captain Falcon are still, were still at the time very smaller series characters, but also very beloved. A lot of people were lo love the Mother series, as well as F-Zero, having only a few games at that point. So having them included in the roster was a, like a really big surprise for gamers. Having Luigi unlock carries a special weight because it's, you know, he was very similar to Mario, nearly a clone. Okay, he was pretty much a clone. And having Mario's brother join him alongside in the Smash fight was kind of like, a, oh look, Luigi's here too, you know? Jigglypuff being the kind of surprise reveal because of her recent popularity in the anime with Pokemon and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden now she's in Smash Brothers, which was a big thing. Like, oh my gosh, I can't, like of all Pokemon characters, they put Jigglypuff in? Then moving over to Melee, the character in Locks there, we have Dr. Mario, Pichu, Falco, Jigglypuff, Marth, Young Link, Ganondorf, Mewtwo, Luigi, Roy, and Mr. Game & Watch. These all follow a similar trend here. Brand new characters people are excited about, like Bowser, Sheik and Zelda, Ice Climbers, they all come with the game right off the bat for players to play with. But joke characters like Pichu, or, you know, new series like Marth kind of bringing that over to the West. Fan favorites like Young Link and Mewtwo and Ganondorf for that matter, all were selected as unlockable characters. Getting back to what I was saying earlier, when the starting roster is decided in a game, it needs to be designed in a way to inhibit new players to be able to want to pick up certain characters. It kind of prohibits also players from choosing the characters that aren't unlocked. So when you start off the game with only Mario, Link, and whoever, your choices are who you have. You could only play as these characters. D Duh. So let's finally talk about Smash Ultimate starting roster and what they said in the Smash Direct go month back, month back, maybe even longer. Oh my goodness. Sakurai was talking about how the roster may start very small. He didn't specifically confirm, but when he showed on screen, he showed the original Smash 64 roster. And I know you may be thinking, Oh my gosh, do I literally have to unlock every single character again? Well, well, yes, but but here's why. If you look how the character unlocks have been handled in each game progressing, it's gotten kind of lackluster. There were interesting ways in Brawl, like you could get them throughout this subspace campaign, or you could do a certain number of matches. But once it comes to Smash 3DS and Wii U, it was literally just play 100 matches, play 200 matches. And everyone who bought the game knows what they did. They played one stock matches, 1v1. They just SD to get a quick match over, restart, replay, keep going. Back in the day of like Melee, I remember as a kid, first of all, never even knowing what the final roster was, what character reveals were even coming. I've been playing this game already for like a year, maybe even two years at this point. I'm just playing along and all of a sudden I finish up a match. No way. That's, no, 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 no. That's no, 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 no way is that. Oh! Go. Mewtwo is in this game the whole time? I couldn't believe it. One of the most hyped characters from the Pokemon anime is in Smash Bros. This whole time he was in Smash. I remember the thrill and the excitement and the adrenaline rushing through my entire body to the point where I was so excited and scared that I couldn't beat him and I died.
And I think that's something they're trying to achieve here with Smash Ultimate. The developers realize, yes, most of you have already unlocked these all of these characters before. Everyone's fought a Wario or a Game & Watch or a Dr. Mario character unlocked. This game is marketed to a wide variety of players. People who have never played Smash, people who have maybe only played 64, or maybe only played Melee, or people like me played everyone. All of them. Even the 3DS one. Regrettably. What they're trying to do here is to make character unlocks special again. Make them exciting. Sakurai already said before the game releases, we will know every single character in the roster. Which I can see why that might suck because then it's like there's no surprise reveals while you're playing. But at the same time, we live in the, the internet age, okay? So basically a day comes out, everyone knows the entire roster. And if there is a secret character in there, people will grind crazy just to try to fight and burn through whatever achievements they have to. And not just enjoying the experience as they go along. So I'm perfectly fine knowing the entire roster going in because then I know it all, I know exactly what it is, and I'll take my time getting each character as I, as I get them. So backing up for a few seconds, the roster starting as small as it's going to be is is intentional for both new fans as well as returning for new people these selection of characters are maybe easy to pick up they've been around since the entire series history there are a lot of well-known characters so someone who's never played smash before or maybe new into the whole series can see oh there's mario why don't i play him oh i played breath of the wild why don't i just try out link it's a welcome invite to new players rather than barging open the door with an 80 character roster and saying hey new player why don't you select some of these characters Pick one. There's there's 80. Pick one. It's to make it less intimidating for them. Because if you just start up a game and there's 80 characters in the roster, who do you pick? Who do you pick? Beyond that, for veterans anyways like myself and probably plenty of you, I'm sure you've gotten to a point now with now four Smash games out, technically five-ish if you count 3DS and Wii U, where you've basically, you've solidified who's your main. You've played the same character hundreds of times. You always choose that character. You experiment here and there, but it's always you go back to, you know, your favorite boy every time. Now you launch the newest Smash Brothers game and your character is not playable yet. The reason they're doing this is because the game, it's forcing older players to experiment with new fighters. I played Mario tons of times, I played Link tons of times, I played Donkey Kong, Samus, whoever. But maybe none of them became my main, or maybe none of them actually became one of my favorite characters. But now here in Smash Ultimate, I'm gonna have to play these characters to unlock the other ones. I don't have a choice there, because that's all I have to choose from. So it's kind of encouraging players to pick up new fighters, because even as you unlock characters going forward, you may not unlock the one you're looking for. Maybe you unlock, you know, Luigi. <laughs> And you're like, okay, well, maybe I'll give Luigi a try. And all of a sudden, maybe now you like playing Luigi. And even when you have the final roster, you'll keep, go back to Luigi sometimes and play him. See, this is brilliant. It's brilliant game design. They limit the roster at the beginning of the game to kind of guide players throughout the roster, unlocking characters here and there, which in turn encourages the player to pick up and try different characters. Because if the game could have simply launched with all the characters, and we would have all gravitated towards our favorite characters, and that's it, set it, story, done. But with the opportunity of how to unlock people and how to navigate through that, it gives players the opportunity to play more characters. Because that's the point of this game. There's so many. As far as how unlocks are handled, Sakurai did mention in the direct anyways that they're going to be taking a more creative approach to how you unlock players. Do 10 matches, you're fighting Falco. Do 30 matches, you're fighting Ganondorf. Or maybe it is, but maybe their milestones are stretched out so that's not the most optimal way to do it. In Brawl, there was the option to unlock them through Subspace Emissary, through the story mode, and whatever this new Spirits mode is, if it's something similar, they could do that where if you lock them progressively, I don't think it's a big campaign like that, but whatever. I'm hoping for them to go back to how you could unlock characters in Melee. For example, when you're at the Mushroom Kingdom stage in the adventure mode, you cross the finish line with a two in any place in the time of the seconds hand, the minute hand, whatever, and all of a sudden you get a random cutscene where Luigi hops on Mario's head and you fight him in the next round basically giving you the opportunity to now unlock him. I want more moments like that. I want more creative, fun ways to unlock characters to make it so it's actually exciting to unlock these characters again because it's been a grind these past few iterations of Smash. Who wants to do one stack matches over and over and over and over and over again? Because it's just, it's boring. It's boring. And why design the game in a way to unlock all of these characters in a boring fashion? Mm. Sakurai is a genius. He realized he has a nearly 80 character roster to deal with here. He realizes for new fans, if they just open the box, it's got 80 fighters. 
Wait, then what? And they realize for returning veterans, if they open the box with 80 fighters, they're just gonna pick their main and then that's it. They'll try out the new characters, but they'll just gravitate right back towards their character. So making the starting roster limited to the original Smash 64 roster opens up a lot of opportunities for both new and returning fans to the series. New fans have a less intimidating way to start this game, given the opportunity to start and play certain characters and unlock them as they go and experiment from there. And for returning players, it kind of forces you to play other characters. Try out people maybe you haven't before. The designers tailor the experience to the player, helping them navigate through the roster by going from character to character and encourage them to play more than just their main. Personally, this is one of the most exciting features for this new game for me. And I, I, I'm just like, Ah, Sakura, you're a genius, man. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think about having a smaller starting roster and having creative ways to unlock characters and how it's going to guide your experience, blah, blah, blah. I'm really excited to see what people start picking, like what characters people start picking up. We all have our favorites. We all have the ones we love. We all have the play styles we love, but I'm just so excited for how this game's going to be tailored for each person's experience and what characters they out, what characters, what people unlock and which people start gravitating towards. With a roster as big as it is, you should play multiple characters you should just be playing mario every time i mean you can but but you should be sure to give this video a big awesome like if you haven't already definitely subscribe for tons tons more on super smash brothers ultimate we are getting close to the reveal reveal no we are getting close to the release date of this game but yeah we are it's like three two three ish month two ish months no two months oh so while news might slow down for a little bit, new character reveals might slow down for a bit, there's still plenty to talk about, plenty to speculate on, and keep this hype cycle going. Thanks again guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!